This is not our usual beat, but as connectivity experts, both of us have been getting a lot of questions about what happened with the exploding devices in Lebanon. So we're going to cover it from a technology point of view. Brian, what happened with these devices in Lebanon? So about 5,000 pagers were modified so that the battery included an explosive device that could be detonated remotely by sending a special code to the pagers. And so sounds like a lot of them uh, detonated all at the same time. So they really were modified with explosives. This wasn't just some trick to make a lithium battery explode. Exactly. Yeah. The sort of batteries that are in there, they're usually wrapped with foil and stuff. And so they'll get really hot and then they'll kind of expand and they can start a fire and stuff, but the sort of videos that are coming out make it pretty clear that it's it's something like a three gram explosive. So pagers, pagers are a little different than cell phones. How are they different? Are I mean, like I mean, physically, are are they on the same cellular network, but just don't let you do calls, or are they right. really different technology? So pagers are really a one way, or or in some cases, a two way device that's you know a lot smaller and is just meant to receive kind of a very short message. That's a lot of times like numeric, or maybe it'd be some, just a very short text message. It actually operates on their own network. So there's pager networks that operate at usually much lower frequencies than the cell networks. Like what? Like 35 megahertz, 50 megahertz, maybe, maybe up to oh, like 450 megahertz. Lower. Yeah, exactly. Much, much lower. And so right, right. Uh, cell phones are often you know, 1200, 1800 megahertz in that range. So this is... Yep. Yeah. The commercial pager networks are, are at much lower frequencies than that. So they get... actually lower than radio stations. Like, yeah. Yeah. Lower than FM radio. Yeah. I guess there's a point to it, right? Lower bandwidth, but they would really go through walls and things. Right. They're you can have... It's, it's, exactly. You can have one tower that operates your pager network that covers a whole metropolitan area and goes through buildings and stuff. Yep. So I think of it as a 1980s technology. Are people still using pagers in the US? Yeah. There's a lot of people that still use pagers in the US. Hospitals where people are on call. And I know volunteer firefighters that have pagers. It's just an easy way of, you know, there's no excuse. Have your pager on you in case we need you. That's sort of nice in that it's kind of a token-based system for people that are doing like right. IT operations or whatever. You can pass right. the when pager. You're not on duty anymore. You hand it to the other person. <laughs> exactly. Yep. And so there's always someone who has it and can be reached and there's kind of no excuses. Exactly. Now, of course, these devices in Lebanon were, were modified. So I take it there's no reason for anyone here to be concerned. That's absolutely it's right. It's not I, just a hack. Right. I think it was kind of a, a targeted thing. Any device that you've purchased at Walmart or whatever of any pager, I mean, you shouldn't really be worried about it. So the latest news that just came as we sat down is now the walkie-talkies. Is that the same story? Sounds like similar story. It sounds like the walkie-talkies that exploded had replacement batteries from the last few months sort of purchased around the same time. And so it sounds like that's a similar sort of targeted thing. All right. Thank you, Brian. Rest of you, I hope this was informative. I think we answered some of the questions that have been coming in continuously to the two of us. You know, stay safe out there and uh, see you all online.